Good afternoon. Uh, some quick background. I'm of Indian origin, born in India and London, um, and uh, grew up in London rather than born in India. Um, have had a few careers, one in industry, uh, one in consulting, uh, one in banking, and one as an investor, uh, which is where I am today. I run an investment firm which focuses on investing in healthcare, technology, and financial services, particularly in inclusion. So financial inclusion, healthcare inclusion, and digital inclusion. We invest in Indian businesses that we take global. Um, I understand the topic of uh, your, your event is, is the future of money. And as an investor, of course, it's, it's the lifeblood of what we do. And I'm delighted to spend five or 10 minutes just giving you some, some thoughts on that for, for what they're worth. And I, I, I wish I could be there in person to, to engage with you more on it. Um, so from our point of view, money is, of course, the medium of exchange. But we have a sense that money isn't what it appears to be anymore. And its role is changing quite dramatically in the information era. And as we move from the industrial era to the information era, the role of money is, is set to change and is already changing quite fast. We see money as part of a, a, the system itself, the financial system or the money system itself is structured, multi-layered. It's managed and influ influenced by regulators and by people that have lots of money too. And there are beneficiaries at every layer in that system. It's, it's touched by almost everyone on the planet. And so when you get it, it's worth considering its source uh, because the source may determine its character. And so in our business, of course, we're very interested in the source of money. Money from somebody who's crooked is very different from money that comes from a pensioner. And so even if the contracts underlying that money and how we manage it and what we do with it, um, even if the note looks the same, the character of money is enormously determined by the roles and the obligations that come with that money. And so we see money as something that isn't characterless. It isn't just a medium of exchange. It has a character. And so that character is very important for us to understand. In today's age, the digitization of money between individuals um, means that actually the state is less and less involved. And often very few institutions are involved. So digital money effectively has become a form of barter between peers who are individuals. And so for us, it's, it's become a means of trade. It's almost like the clock has been rolled back uh, almost to the pre-industrial era, almost sometimes to the pre-agricultural era uh, or during the, pre during the agricultural era when money was bartered, when goods were bartered. And so all the technology and financial instruments that we're now seeing come up, particularly in the developing world, um, are barter-based system. Uh, that allows money to be reduced to a digital form and transacted. And so it's, it's strange how we have got more advanced in our use of financial systems uh, globally, but we've gone back to figuring out how to make money ubiquitous and in the hand, place it in the hands of individuals and to almost disintermediate the financial systems. And this, in essence, we think is one of the, the most important revolutions in terms of the role of money that's happening today. Hard assets, and in fact, almost everything can more easily now be turned into money through digitization. It doesn't matter whether it's property or it's gold or it's things that we've hoarded away that could be clothes, things that we might have previously thrown away. It could be photographs. It could be anything. All these things can be turned into a photograph, stored digitally, and auctioned. And so... There, there is a shift that's happening that doesn't require me to have a, a bank. It doesn't require me to have a financial institution regulate me in terms of my transactions. I, as an individual in any part of the world, can take my knowledge, my goods, my services, and, and other things that I, I think are valuable. And because of the digital mechanisms that are now growing up, as I say, more rapidly in places where the financial system is not as robust, is not maybe as historically uh, structured as, as it is in the West. Uh, so places like India in particular, like China also, um, we're finding new financial systems that are peer-to-peer -peer are growing up. Many of these, of course, are sold and, and structured by other large institutions. 
uh, not banks, but other non-bank institutions. But we're also finding that individuals figure out how to create their own systems to transact too. So there's a lot of change happening in the financial world for us that we see and that we have a chance to invest in, promote, and it creates a, a more citizen level transaction mode uh, amongst the people that have never participated in the financial system before. Um, I would say one, one, a few more things and then wrap up. Um, in the West, when I travel from the East to the West, I'm, I'm always surprised to hear politicians in particular um, talking about their ism, their socialism or their capitalism, as if that's the defining idea for money in the future. And as if, as if it's even the defining idea for money today. Uh, it seems so dated. It seems so industrial era. When you, when you look at how money is being used, particularly in poorer countries, but these new rapidly growing poor countries. Uh, these isms seem like they are ideas from, from an age that's, that's passing us. Um, and those, so those political ideas also seem outdated. Um, money, of course, has this system built around it. And all forms of money, even those that are transacted from peer to peer and mobile phones have that. But actually money appears much more now like water, that it just flows everywhere. And new financial systems that are much more leveling the playing field uh, are, are allowed to actually succeed. And therefore it brings us to my, my final point to you, which is that money can be a force for good. It can be a force for bad, or it can be a means just to make ends meet. But in an enlightened world, um, we get to choose. And this is the big difference, that we're moving to financial systems where we get to choose how money is used. And so money will have a new character now and, and in an enlightened world where it's, it's much more than simply just a means of transaction. Um, Ketan, that I can really there. a challenge. Uh, I'm glad that I heard it and we've recorded it. I'm sorry everyone else is not here. Can I ask you just a couple of questions uh, about sure. what you've said? Because um, just thinking of the other things we've been discussing, uh, you said money is leveling. Well, the two fundamental questions are, uh, is this uh, looking from the point of view that the money is concentrated through the mediation of financial institutions, you're saying in that sense, money is more democratized. It's not locked up, like publishing is not any longer locked up with the, the big publishing houses. There are many op other opportunities. How does that, uh, is that in any way related positively or negatively with the rising inequality, which is a theme that's been, been coming up? Because it, it sounds so, like I it's in the other direction. I think it's moving in the right direction. The, the industrial era allowed massive institutions to control the flow of everything, whether it was news flow or whether it was money or whether it was even water or anything else. And I think um, there are some things which are changing faster than others. Newsprint is certainly one of those. Information that's digitized has moved and, and not always for the good, but it's moved so it's available to everybody. Um, money similarly, I think, because of digitization is going to be available for everybody. And I think we're, we're in an era, though, where the inequalities that arise from the flow of money is causing political disruption and populism and massive disruptions to the political systems, not necessarily always for the good. Um, but this is a transition period. And as money certainly finds its way into the hands of everybody and entrepreneurship, therefore, is something that is more widely distributed. Um, I think I think the role will change, and I think this political transition, painful as it is, will end up in a better place. It's really a very important insight you've given us, Katan. Which uh, in uh, one and a half days of interesting discussion, this is a point we didn't uh, uh, didn't get, and it'll be interesting for us to digest it in the in the context of the rest of our. Uh, by the way, have you written something on this which uh, you could share with us, which we could distribute? We will definitely we, put up. We have, not, we, we have written a lot about the flow of money, but not in this manner. It, it's something, it's on our list of something to formally publish in the next six months. So when we do, I'll, I'll certainly send it to you, but I think a very important discussion.
and, and I, I wish okay. I could have been there. Okay. Well, thanks all with all the travel and other things that we at least we got to uh, we got you for a few minutes, and I look forward to our conversation.